Right, so David Simpson is head of the nuclear advisory at professional services firm KPMG. I'm pleased to say he joins me in the studio now. Thanks so much for coming in, David. So I know that in, in some ways it's way too early to say what the impact, what the implications of all this will be, but I guess it's bound to really revive debate about the pros, uh, perhaps more seriously the cons of nuclear technology. Mariam, you're absolutely right. It's probably more about perception than it is about fact. What do we know? We know that there's a major nuclear emergency in Japan. We know there's been a big, big earthquake and tsunami. We don't expect to get an earthquake or tsunami in any of our European nations. But nonetheless, the public will be very worried. The Japanese government has been talking about a partial meltdown. What could that mean for the industry's immediate future? Again, I know it's too early to tell, but I'm thinking about contracts for nuclear plants, the push for nuclear energy, not just here in the UK, but also in the States. I think the things to worry about are how much radioactivity is released into the atmosphere. A meltdown is simply a reduction of the center of the reactor into a pool of metal. And theoretically, there's no reason for that necessarily to escape. Right, so um, what... How concerned should we be then about the amount of radio, radioactivity that's been leaked? We should be very concerned. Right we should always be worried. And we should be worried about the effect that it's going to have on nuclear safety elsewhere in the world. What we're talking about in Japan is an older style plant with active cooling systems. In other words, they need to do something to cool the core down. The new generation of plants which are now being built have passive cooling systems. In other words, they don't require pumps to cool the centre down and should be much less likely to have a meltdown. But as you said earlier, Mariam, it's not so much about the facts, it's about what people believe. Public confidence is going to need to be kept high for the nuclear renaissance in Europe to continue. Mm. I mean, before these events in Japan, quite rightly, we were, there was talk of this nuclear renaissance uh, that you mentioned, you know, we were seeing something of a surge in nuclear projects. I mean, in the U.S., it was seen as a way to lessen dependence on oil. So are investors going to be a little more cautious about putting money into these kinds of projects? Well, the challenge is, what is it that Europe does? We're trying to reduce carbon dioxide. The best way and the cheapest way to reduce carbon dioxide is through the nuclear industry. And the nuclear industry has been working tremendously hard both to make itself safe and to satisfy other people that it is safe. This is bound to be a setback, but it's not necessarily a fatal setback. If we can find out what the facts have been, we can satisfy ourselves that these facts are not going to apply here in Europe, then perhaps the nuclear renaissance will remain on track. Do you think we'll see more focus, more investment, perhaps on the nuclear safety side? We're already seeing a huge amount of investment on the nuclear safety side. And we're seeing the big power companies, of course, seeking to build nuclear in the UK. E.ON, RWE, Iberdrola, all of the major players who are in the UK already. And they're not likely to be put off by a for a day or two by what's happening. But over the longer term, who knows what's going to happen? Well, that's precisely the problem. I mean, our governments, not just in Europe, but in the US, China, India, embarking on big nuclear energy plans. When you just look at these scenes of devastation coming out of Japan right now, conjuring up images, memories of Chernobyl, I mean, this is these pictures are going to make it that much more difficult for governments to really sell nuclear energy plans to the public, right? Well, it's interesting. The pictures we're seeing are those of tsunami damage. They're not, by and large, of nuclear damage. We've seen two explosions at a reactor, which is extremely worrying. I absolutely grant you that. But we don't know what's actually going on inside those reactors. And what we don't know is whether there will be able to be a message to say, look what happened in the worst disaster that there's been in Japan since the Second World War, and look how little damage happened from nuclear. We don't know whether that's going to be the story, or whether there will be a story which says there was a serious nuclear incident. We still don't know yet. But what we do know is that our populations need sustainable power, they need power at the right price, and they need safe power. It's very clear still, I think, that nuclear can provide those things. The question is whether the public is going to accept what governments are saying about them. Great to get your thoughts on this. David Simpson, head of nuclear advisory, KPMG.